that are in the book, that are doing the book, have had changes in their lives. So Mari, Marta and I were really having to give time for those things to move by, to then say, you know what, we need you know, this version uh, turned in, or we need that version turned in. Um, one of the things is when we were also looking for publishing company, which was very interesting, was that we, it wasn't an easy process. There was not great interest in the book, mm. or that this book would be a sell from publishing companies that we thought would be like, let's do this and let's jump at this. Um, and one of the things that we kept hearing is that our themes were too similar, that um, the stories were too similar and it wouldn't be so interesting. And to me, if anything, everyone should have been jumping at that. Because the fact that I'm from Panama, Mari's Puerto Rican, Panamanian, Marta's Puerto Rico, Evelyn is Venezuela, Haiti, Monica is uh, Peru, and Lorelai is Jamaica, and U the U.S. and everything. And the fact that our stories were still the same speaks to where I think I'm at today, even that's different from my pieces that were global Africans. Ooh, and no matter where we are at, our African experience is the same. The exclusion of being a woman of African descent is the same. The exclusion of our communities and the inclusiveness of our communities, the justice that we lack in our communities based on being people of African descent is a common theme in each of our stories. There's not one story uh, in this book that doesn't speak to a level of pain uh, that comes with not just most of us who are doing this work, because there's, the, there's a level of pain that comes with doing the work because there's a, there's a, there's a truth that comes with doing this work that is not easily received. Um, but there's also a level of pain uh, that comes with the exclusion of taking such a strong position, of being clear of who you are, what you come from, and not allowing anyone to shape that. And the women in this book are very much like that. Um, I come from a very strong black family in Panama, a very strong black community in Panama, uh, very Caribbean based. I am of Martinican, Jamaican, and Bayesian descent. Um, and I knew I was black. I knew what came with being black, especially from a Panamanian context of being of grandparents who were silver workers and grew up in the segregated uh, presence of Panama. So I know what it was like in a Panamanian context to go to segregated school as a black child. I lived in a predominantly black community, Rainbow City, um, and I know what integration into schools felt like. Actually, Panama, we integrated in 1978, which is way after Brown versus the Board of Education. Um, so I knew all of that. I knew um, what it meant to fight. I, 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 I sat at my grandfather's feet and heard his stories about coming from Martinique and what that was like. I, till, till this day, every time I'm home, I hear a new story from my father because my, my work has allowed my father to tell his story. Um, and that to me is my greatest gift of sitting here with you is that I'm now allowed to tell my family's story in a way that has not been told before. I go home and recently my father and I were driving around the neighborhood where he grew up in Gatun and he talked about the, the separation of the railroad track. And then, you know, we were going to this market and I said, Daddy, I want a banana. And he was like, oh, I'll buy you bananas, but I don't eat bananas. And I'm thinking, gee, our whole life we always had bananas in the house. I remember, like, Michelle, did we not have, he's like, we ate bananas. And then my father said, I don't eat bananas because the worst beating I got from your grandfather was when I took a banana from a white, man, white man's tree. Mm -hmm. um, and this was just recently. And to hear him finally say that out loud was huge. So I think the book allows us to name things uh, that don't get named on an everyday basis. It, it allows us to share a deeper sense of self, our, our spiritual sense of self, because in my piece I also find that doing this work has been a spiritual journey um, of my own development. Um, but also I think you know, we is the Afro Latina diaspora, but me as a, as I'm I'm the 
opposite of Manny's experience in the sense that I was not allowed to say I was Latino when I came here. They did not give me that right. They, I had to take it and keep it and honor it and own it for myself. Because every space I walked into, no matter how much my Spanish was good, no matter how much I said I was born and raised in Panama, I was not a Latina. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right? You sure you were born in that? I mean, I got it all. Um, so because of that, and because of the journey here, I've come to terms with Latinidad in the context of this country is something that I'm still trying to make peace with. But what I know I am is black. Mm. Um, what I know I am is of African descent. Um, because even in the context of Panama, um, I know that is true. I'm currently narrating a film in Panama about Simandoraje in Panama, and we're up to almost over 100 names of African locations in Panama. Can you repeat uh, that one more time, Simo? Sima no Raje in Panama uh, by Toshi Sakai. So I think the book also allowed us to um, put some of that out. You know, in my piece, I really talk about being able to go into African spaces, continent spaces, and, 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 and allow them to see the Latin American connection to them. <laughs> Um, going into Caribbean spaces and allowing them to see, you know, I can switch off right now if you want me to and start talking about and be like, you're from Jamaica? I'll be like, yes. <laughs> you know, because I can do that because that's how I was raised. So, you know, I'm so excited that we're here and we're here to share uh, this time with you because um, our work is still, we have so much to do. There is so much to do uh, because there's not a day or week that goes by where I am not put in the position to explain myself. Uh, so there is still a lot of work to do. So I, I want to, you know, give Evelyn. Evelyn's like, see, see, but <laughs> a chance to say a couple of words, and then you know, Monica. And